Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we are not going to do any Figma tutorials. Today, I have the Samsung M8 monitor with me. I recently purchased this monitor as my secondary display uh, for my design work. So let's find out what all this monitor has to offer. Uh, I'll not do the unboxing video. I'll just quickly put up a short clip if you want to see how this monitor comes with. But I think you can find tons of videos online uh, regarding the unboxing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to explain the features and I'm also going to explain the pros and cons of this monitor. So if you're somebody who is looking to buy a secondary monitor for your design work or for your uh, computing work, and especially if you are somebody from India and you want to buy this monitor, uh, what are the pros and cons of this monitor as a designer, what I felt, and should you buy it or not, okay? So let's get started. So this is Samsung's latest offering in the monitor space. Uh, you have the Samsung M8 monitor. This is known as the M8 monitor and it's released this year itself. Uh, it's a 32 inch 4K display. And uh, right off the back, if you see the entire design looks quite familiar. It's very close to what Apple is offering in their iMacs. It's very close to that Apple iMac uh, feel. Even the color schemes are very close to it, but it is released before the iMacs actually. Now, um, I got this in this light teal green color, but you can choose from different colors. You have the pure white, you have the pure black, you have green, you have pink, and I think you also have some sort of blue. Um, but I got this green and it looks fabulous behind my, I mean, in front of my white wall. So right off the bat, the design aesthetic is absolutely amazing. It has zero bezels. I mean, almost zero bezels, I would say. I'll just turn on the uh, monitor in a bit. But let me sh first show you all the other things that it comes with. So it comes with a power brick. This is the power brick and it's a huge power brick. And that's why they were able to make this monitor really thin. So this is the huge power brick that it comes with. It's its adapter here. Now you also get two cables. So one of this is the micro HDMI to full size HDMI cable. And then you also get this USB-C to USB-C. So uh, this device has three ports. You have the uh, HDMI port, micro HDMI port actually, and then two USB-C port, out of which one of it is the power delivery port as well. So basically you can screen the uh, your laptop to this display as well as charge it simultaneously. So one of them is a power delivery port, 60 watt um, is the power output. So it basically able to charge your laptop as well or any device that you connect with via USB-C as well as display it as well. The other one is just a data port, data USB-C port. So you can use it as a hub actually. So you can connect a dongle to that USB port and connect your all peripherals directly to that dongle. And you need not to attach anything to the TV because it will automatically interface everything as a docking hub with that TV. Okay, so that's one of the benefits. So you get two USB-C ports. Sadly, you don't get any, uh, I would say 4.5 mm jack. So everything is through Bluetooth connection, but I never find it any problems for not having that jack because I rarely use uh, aux cables these days. So I connect everything, every speaker that I have is a Bluetooth speaker. So I think I never found any problems with that. So those are the three ports and all these cables are included. Very high quality cables is provided by Samsung here, really thick cables. And apart from that, apart from brick, you get a webcam. This is a 1080p webcam that you can attach on the back of uh, the screen magnetically. And then you also have the remote. So uh, Samsung is also projecting this as a TV. So you'll also get this TV remote because it has all the functionalities of TV as well. And that's the best thing I like about this monitor. I'll explain you in a bit how this works as a TV as well. And yeah, that's about it. That's much, that is what you get in the box. You also get this metallic stand. So it's part metallic, part um, plastic. So this bit is a metallic stand. You have to attach it to another back, which is adjustable. So this is height adjustable up and down. So you can do that as well. And um, this one is a plastic bit. This one is a metal, but the entire build quality, I would say is pretty nice. Here, if you can notice, there's a small entity here, this one below the monitor. This is for the uh, remote sensing. So remote IR blaster is here. So it uses this for the uh, TV functions. And that's about it. It's really nice. Uh, the back has a crossbone structure. I'll show you that as well. So the entire design aesthetic and the minimal setup is quite minimal and it's really easy to set this entire thing up. Now, now that we have talked about the entire thing, what it comes with, let's go into the review bit. 
So let's power on this device. You can power on this device via three things. First of all, you can do it via Alexa or Bixby. You can configure it and then you can wake up it via the voice commands. Uh, the second thing is uh, via the power button at the back of this monitor. And the third and my most favorite way of waking it up is via this remote. So you can use this remote and you can click this power button and it'll wake up for you. And if you have connected a USB-C automatically, it'll automatically boot into the USB-C mirroring. Uh, but if you haven't connected anything, you can directly go into the TV functionality with this remote. It'll automatically go there as well. And as you can see, it has this TV interface. This is Samsung TV Plus. This comes with Samsung TV Plus automatically installed. And this is the interface for the TV. And uh, you have tons of apps here available for you because it's running on Samsung's Tizen OS. So you have all these different apps, Netflix, Prime Video, Hotstar, Apple TV, YouTube, whatever you feel like you have everything here. Apart from that, you also have Internet Explorer in the end. So uh, this is the interface that they have. And once you log in into these different services, it will pull up the content from all these different services and collate it for you in different categories for like free movies, TVs, Netflix, Prime Video, right? It will just collate everything in this one window. So you don't have to go into this individual apps and figure out the content. It can show you everything here and search for you all the content directly in all the apps here itself. So it's a pretty nice and neat UI, I say. And uh, Samsung has done a really nice job in cleaning up this entire interface. It's pretty responsive, no glitches, and works really well, okay? So this is how the TV remote works in. And let me just quickly show you if we go to Netflix, how this looks like. So. The Netflix app just works like what you have it on your normal TV and you can control everything from here, which is pretty, pretty nice. Actually, you can control everything from here with this remote. So that's the best part. That's the sweet part. Um, I'll say I like about this uh, TV a lot because you can just control everything whenever you're not using it at a monitor. You can use everything with this uh, remote and work it out. Uh, so let me just quickly show you how this um, speaker sounds like. So it has inbuilt speakers. And uh, to be very fair, the speakers go pretty loud. So the speakers go pretty loud actually in this monitor. Uh, but the thing is at higher sound, it gets a little tinny and it lacks bass, any bass whatsoever because it's a very slim monitor. So obviously you cannot pack in so much of a bass on this thin monitor. But uh, you have the speakers anyway with you. So if you want to watch it with speakers, you do it. Uh, I've connected my Bluetooth speakers to it, which gives a much better sound. So that's also you can do. But yeah, uh, this is the picture quality. Since it's a 4K display and at a TV viewing angle, this looks absolutely amazing. So yeah, I really love this entire functionality. Okay, um, let's go back to other functions of this entire monitor. So you also get Samsung TV Plus, as I said, uh, which gives you free uh, TV uh, selections. So you can get a lot of these uh, news channels and other channels for free included in the Samsung TV Plus subscription. So that's what you're also getting with this TV. I'll quickly show you the settings on the left. So this was the media settings. Now you can also go to workspace settings. And in the workspace setting, it shows you a couple of options. So it connects to your local uh, network. And then you can connect your Windows PC, your Mac, or your Samsung DeX. So basically, if you have a Samsung phone, you can connect this monitor to your Samsung phone and it'll convert it into a um, working desktop, which they call it as Samsung DeX. You have a lot of Samsung 365 services as well, which is uh, Microsoft 365, sorry, which is already included in this entire monitor. And you can run a lot of things from here. You can directly log into your browser and you can also do a lot of uh, browser stuff from here. Okay. And uh, let me just go back. Okay, so you can do a lot of things here. And one quick thing about this is you can connect your uh, keyboard and your mouse directly to the monitor. Uh, you don't have to do any like devices in between as a peripheral. You can just connect these two directly to your monitor and you can run browsers and all directly, Gmail, everything directly into the monitor. So you don't need a computer directly. And if you want to just run a quick emergency emails or something like that, you can do it from the monitor. That's one more thing I like. The second part is you can connect your Mac. Uh, it also supports AirPlay. So you can connect your Mac, your phone, or your iPad directly wirelessly through AirPlay with this monitor. So connectivity is absolutely amazing. Samsung has nailed down the software part really well, and I have faced no issue whatsoever with any connections. 
Now let me quickly show you the um, settings option. So it'll show you your connected devices. So if you have connected um, anything before, it'll show you what all things you have here and you can reconnect to those devices. You have an option for multi-view. Basically, you can watch TV side by side. You can also connect a USB-C monitor and it'll show you both the feeds directly into the system. So you can watch it, both the things in from two different sources in the same view. So that's all you can do. I don't do it usually, but you can do it as well. And on the settings part, you have these different options. You have your Wi-Fi settings, intelligent sounds. So it also does some 3D sound by making. Okay, you have this different picture mode that is available to you if you want um, on the settings, um, right? And you have the sound mode, then you have smart monitor setup, Bluetooth speakers. You can set up anything from here, right? Yeah. Uh, and device input. So you can connect as many as device you want through Bluetooth. So that's the best part. And if you want to do like even more detailed settings, then you can go to all settings and it'll show you even more details that you can go into. It also has a gaming mode where it just gives you a more like a faster response time and like it boosts up the graphics a little bit for like your gaming experience. So it has everything else uh, as you expect from a standard TV or a monitor. And as a monitor, as a TV, it works really, really well. Okay. So now let's get into the monitor bit of the things. Okay, so now I have hooked this monitor with my laptop, the MacBook Pro that you can see here. And let's see what uh, this has to offer, this M8 monitor has to offer as a monitor. So now, as I said, you can connect your USB-C power delivery output directly to your Mac. It will charge your Mac as well as it will display the screen directly on the monitor as well. Now, right out of the box, if you see, uh, I've not done any calibration here. If you see, the colors are pretty vibrant, but it's not as vibrant as the MacBook screen. MacBook is obviously an 8K display and this is a 4K display. So you'll obviously have that difference here. Now, as a designer, I tend to switch a lot between my Mac, 16-inch Mac, Book Pro and the screen. So I was able to notice the difference between the two screens and I was a little annoyed by that because of that. Because the richness of this uh, Retina screen is much better than what we have on the monitor, M8 monitor. So if you are somebody who is switching between the Retina MacBook and the screen very often, then you might get a little annoyed on that sense, okay? So that's one bit of annoyance. It's The screen is not as rich as I would say, and as color accurate as I would, as I would say, as the Mac is, okay? So that creates a little bit of like, a uh, little bit of frustrations when you do that comparison. But apart from that, if you're just gonna use your uh, monitor as a primary thing, then I think you'll get used to it pretty quickly, okay? So that is one point to note. The second thing is uh, the resolution itself. So it's a 4K monitor, but spread across a 32 inch screen, right? Ideally a 27 inch would have been better because your PPI would have been really higher. But since it's a 32 inch screen and still a 4K monitor, you might see a little bit of blurriness and pixelation in some areas. It's not, not noticeable all the way, but especially on text, um, it's noticeable. The second thing is when you're using it as a TV, you sit a little far be away from the TV. So uh, from that distance, everything looks absolutely fine. But for a monitor, you tend to sit a little closer to the monitor and that's where you are able to see these artifacts. So if you sit close enough to the monitor, you'll be able to see um, the screen is not as crisp as you expected it to be, okay? So that's one uh, more problem area that I felt from this. Uh, now let me show you about the blacks. Since it's a VA panel, um, VA panel typically has richer blacks and better contrast for colors. But um, I felt that the blacks were not as great. So uh, this is a Figma screen that I'm showing you right now. And if you notice the black, actually it's a pure black, uh, a dark theme black. So on the left and on the right side of the panel, it's slightly grayish. I'm not able to, sh um, I'm not sure if you're able to see it on the screen, but the left and right side of the panel is supposed to be more black. Uh, it looks a little gray. If I show that same screen on my Retina Mac, if you see in this case, um, it's a little bit more richer and darker screen. So even the blacks looks much better on this one than this one. So that was one more, one more of my problem. Um, it was not as color accurate and deep as I expected it to be. And one last problem that I felt, um, which usually happens with a lot of monitor, which is uh, this light bleeding. When you're watching, a uh, dark picture on a dark scene or you're watching maybe a light uh, pure white sort of a background 
then you'll be able to see some sort of illumination on the edges it's i mean it's happens on a lot of monitor but i expect it to be a little less on this but it's not the case with this monitor so let me quickly show you that so it's a pure white video and i'll quickly explain you what do i mean so um the background that you see right as soon as this video plays let me just play this video okay so i'm playing this video and it's just a plain white video and if you can see from that edge you see a little glow right and white glow so this has like irregular uh, illumination which i call it like light bleed uh, from the panels from the edges and uh, on darker scenes it's even a little worse than that so if you're watching it on a dark room you will be able to notice it but on a lighted room you'll not be able to notice this so this is something that you should uh, understand that this since it's a va panel it's not a retina panel you'll face this issue from this monitor uh, so yeah so that's about it like it's a great tv and it's a good monitor now the question comes in like who is this for uh, my recommendation is if you're using if you want if you want this monitor purely for a, a monitor purpose then i would not recommend this monitor um if you just want something purely for monitor purposes uh i think there are better options that you can go for uh, only that you'll not get speakers and anything else from there which i think is fine uh but if you if you are looking for just for a monitor you can go with other monitors dell ultra sharp and lg monitors ultra fine monitors if you're looking for something which is like a mixed use case like uh, in my case i wanted something uh which can be uh, dueled as a tv as well because i don't watch tv that much and i wanted it only for sometimes and i didn't want to invest much in tv so i wanted this monitor because it also has this awesome tv functionality so for my case it worked out well because i wanted a monitor as well as a tv uh, but in your case if you want just a tv then you can go for a regular tv and if you want just a monitor go for a regular monitor but in case you want something which can be dueled as a monitor and you don't want to spend extra then this is a good option uh, for that specific use case apart from that i don't find any other hiccups on this monitor just that the quality of panel could have been a little better uh, and this monitor size could have been a little smaller like say 27 28 inches then the pixel density would have been a little higher so that's my review for it uh, if you find my review interesting and you want to see more videos such videos like that do let me know in the comments and i'll be putting up more videos more tech videos as well from the perspective of a ux designer so i hope this find i mean i hope you find this video well and let's meet in our next video take care bye bye